We are the founders of Club Siberia. We're a collective of inventors, artists, teachers, geeks, and creators that like to work on technical and creative projects. We are makers. We come together to share ideas and create things with our own hands. If you don't own your own tools, or if you just need a space to build your project, we can help. You join Club Siberia like you would join a gym. Our members are our owners. Here you have access to tools and equipment you wouldn't have at home. You get to work with others, take classes, and sharpen skills. A maker is somebody who's not content to just go buy things off the shelf. They want to buy something and take it home and put their own twist on it, or they want to build things from scratch, things that nobody's ever seen before, or new ideas and inventions that come from their heads. My husband and I worked together to build kinetic art, and Gear Lab was one of our first examples of this. It's this interactive table. It's very simple, just wooden gears and quarter-inch bolts and we take a couple of five gallon buckets of gears and a table with some handles attached to all kinds of events, art openings, maker fairs, schools. For me, there's a lot of inspiration all around me. My kids inspire me because I want them to think creatively and my husband and I do a lot of work together and so we bounce ideas off of each other. But even better, being in a community can often inspire you. So there are a lot of people at home being makers and, and building things, but when you bring makers together, it generates a whole new level of new ideas. You bring together hardware and software, fabric and wood, all kinds of interesting new combinations of ideas. You don't have to be a genius to come to Club Siberia. I've learned all kinds of skills here that I didn't have before, and there's lots of simple things that we can teach you here. I'm gonna tell you about my hobby, which is soft circuitry. Maybe Incorporating technology into craft work doesn't seem natural, but it's really easy to do and it can take your crafts to the next level. Here I have a simple circuit I made on a piece of fabric, incorporating LEDs and a battery and a switch. If you know how to thread a needle, we can teach you how to make a simple circuit. This thread is lined with silver and I've created this simple circuit here with LEDs. So instead of sewing on buttons, we're sewing LEDs into fabric. I'd like to tell you about my artwork and my relationship with Club Siberia. I am a fiber artist professionally. I'm a felter. I create all these textiles by hand. And my relationship with Club Siberia is actually just starting out. I met Suzanne and we discussed textiles as part of the makers movement. I know most people think about makers as working with electronics, robotics, machining things. But everything here on this table is 100% handmade from loose wool. You can't get much more maker than that. Um, with Suzanne, we talked about incorporating electronics, lighting into some of my costuming, which interests me. As an example, I'd like to show my hat that I did for a steampunk art show last year. And uh, the theme of the show was Time Travels Messy. As you can see, there's a lot of detail on this hat. It actually told a story. There's a cracked Victorian portrait. The clock is blown up. There's blood. There's a lot going on in here. Looked great in the gallery, taken to the venue for the ball. No one could see any of this. It was too dark. Had I met Suzanne and seen her work with lighting and costuming. By the time I took this hat to the ball, it would have been backlit, would have some glowing light effects going on it, would have been a great collaboration, would have been amazing. I'm also part of the local steampunk group, and we've just started out. So we have lots of steampunk maker ideas that we want to work on, but we don't have a space or the tools, and quite often we don't have the techniques or the technology to do it all by ourselves. So we like to come in here and participate in their space on some larger projects. We have special tools at Club Siberia tools that would be hard to find at a local hardware store. One of those tools is a 3D printer. A 3D printer is different than a 2D printer in that a 2D printer gives you a two-dimensional object like a drawing, where a 3D printer gives you a three-dimensional object like a sculpture. This is accomplished by taking a computerized 3D model and feeding into a software called a slicer software. This slicer software will slice uh, an object into individual two-dimensional slices, and then it sends it to the printer the printer draws each one of these slices and builds the object up back into a three-dimensional object. The most awesome thing about 3D printing is the ability to build whatever you can think of. If you can think of it, like before, if you needed something built, you would have to go find a machinist, build that object for you, or have to spend a lot of time to figure out how to do it. Where now with this, I can reconstruct objects very simply. We also have in our shop a computer numeric controlled milling machine, or CNC machine. The difference between the 3D printer that you just saw and the CNC machine is that the 3D printer takes an empty space and adds bits of material until you have a part that you want. A CNC machine instead takes an area that's filled with a material and removes that until you have the part remaining. One of the advantages of using the CNC machine is that it makes simple, repetitive, 
cuts because of its computer control. You can use the system to repeat the same pattern over and over again, such as this panel from a cabinet. You can change this panel's dimensions, size, aspect ratio, or even the depth of each cut, but it will still be based on the same pattern. Information sharing and empowering people with the knowledge to create is a big part of Club Siberia's mission. This is Austin. Austin's a part of our new U.S. FIRST Robotics program. And before starting this team, he taught a series of workshops to his fellow scouts about robotics. So Austin, can you tell us a little bit about your process for creating a robot? Sure. Well, the first thing you want to do when creating a robot is you always want to identify the problem that you're trying to solve. And once you've identified the problem, you move on to brainstorming and sketches. And from these ideas, you'll create a blueprint of how you want to solve that problem. And from this blueprint, you'll move on to the prototyping phase, where you'll create different variations of your blueprint, and you'll refine and test each idea to find out which one works best for your solution without exploding in your face. And once you find out which one will work best for solving your problem, you'll refine it and add it to a finished product. And if that finished product uh, satisfies your needs completely, then you find a new problem and the cycle continues. This kinetic sculpture takes its inspiration from our childhood. It's a life-size Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Our goal is to uh, have an interactive game with uh, two players. Uh, it will use microcontrollers to operate the basic mechanism. Uh, their gestures will be reflected in the operation of the robots. When, when they move, dodge, and so forth, and punch, the robot that they're controlling will do the same thing. We love everything about art and technology. We're fabricating our dreams into reality. Close Siberia!